right now let's see the mechanism how this is going to occur so the reaction uh, will occur like this now intuitively you should start thinking and you should try to do things on your own now that what perhaps can happen you tell me this is nitrogen it has lone pair this is oxygen it has also lone pair now these are these two are not going to approach each other this has del negative charge this has this has del positive charge now who is going to approach whom this carbon wants electron this oxygen is not going to give its electron to it because oxygen is the one that has pulled its electron so the carbon has to cry for its electron to someone else and that someone else seemingly here is nothing but nitrogen because no other atom has lone pair so this nitrogen is perhaps going to give its electron to the carbon that's the only thing that can happen so this nitrogen is going to give its electron to carbon and when carbon starts to gain electron from outer source it will lose electron from the front into the orbital of oxygen because it cannot expand its valency it has to make four bonds so it's making a new bond it has to break one previous bond right so when this happens what do you have This NH2Z is going to form a bond with carbon, so the plus charge is going to develop on nitrogen because nitrogen has given its electron to carbon. And oxygen is going to gain a negative charge because the electron of the pi bond has gone into the orbital of oxygen. Now you're going to have a imab, intramolecular acid base reaction. The plus charge of this nitrogen, we can we this can be dispensed off by removal of H plus from nitrogen to oxygen. So in that way, both will be neutralized. This O minus will become OH and this NH2 plus will become NH. So now you have a neutral intermediate. And now when you heat it, now we are, we are doing it now, we will do it for a lot many time. The next Few, among the next few reaction, one will be Kanizaro reaction. And in Kanizaro reaction, we are going to see this again. When you heat, then what happens is the energy of the substrate or the material, whatever you have taken, increases. And at the increased energy, the electronic motion increases. And, that, and then something may happen. And one of the possibility of that something is removal of a small molecule from a bigger substrate. If that molecule is stable, and we have been talking all along that water is a stable solvent. Water molecule leaves easily. Water is a good leaving group. So when you heat this, and if there's a possibility of removal of water, that always comes out. And that will we'll be seen in many reactions. And in, this is one of them. And when this happens, this is called elimination reaction. When a smaller molecule leaves out a bigger substrate or a bigger molecule, that reaction is called elimination reaction. So this is the reaction that we are looking at presently is addition elimination because of this step. This is the elimination part. So this water comes out, right? When this water comes out, what we will have now is these two are free bonds, right? We have started with a free bond. There can be a R, there can be H, whatever. So we haven't written anything. This can be an aldehyde, this can be a ketone. So when this water comes out, nitrogen and carbon are already making one bond. So they will make one more bond. So there will be a carbon-nitrogen double bond. This is how it will be. So we have got what we have written before and water will come out. So this is the final product that we will be having out of this reaction. So ammonia derivative will first show addition and after that when we heat this there will be elimination. So this is addition elimination reaction. All right. So whatever this Z be irrespective of that this is the mechanism that will be followed by this ammonia derivative. All right. So as the last three reactions, this also has a particular importance in practical organic chemistry. Now let's see what it is.
Now this Z can be anything. If that Z is OH, the compound would be NH2OH. Fine. The Z is the one. Remember, we are removing hydrogen and adding Z. So if you if you have removed one hydrogen of ammonia and added OH, this will be NH2OH, and this is called hydroxyl amine. I mean NH2 hydroxyl OH, this is called hydroxyl amine, right? When you add this hydroxyl amine on a carbonyl compound, that compound is called oxyme. So this is a functional group, NOH. Now, whatever this carbonyl compound is, whether you have CS3, CS3 or you have C2H5, C2H5 or C2H5H or C2H5, CS3 or CS3H, whatever the antihydroketonic part is, irrespective of that, if you have C double bond NOH, that compound is called oxyme. So, it's a new functional group that we have learned now. This is important and know this here itself. This is called oxyme. When this hydroxylamine gets added on a carbonyl compound, what results is called a oxyme. So when you see this anywhere, irrespective of what this R part is, that compound is called oxyme. All right. We'll be dealing with this oxyme later. Know this now. If the Z is NH2, so the compound will be called, will, will be NH2, NH2. One hydrogen has been removed from ammonia and NH2 has been added. This perhaps you must be knowing. This is called hydrazine. Hydrazine and when hydrazine gets added, whatever this R or H is on carbonyl compound, this is called hydrazone. So hydrazine on addition elimination reaction on carbonyl compound will result in hydrazone. When the Z part is NHPH, then the compound or the ammonia derivative will look like NH2NHPH. Simply NH and HPH will be added. Uh, NHPH will be added on this NH2 after removal of hydrogen from ammonia. So this is this is phenyl hydrazine. Like this is hydrazine on hydrazine you have added a phenyl. So this is called phenyl hydrazine. Fine. When phenyl hydrazine gets added on a carbonyl compound, that product, the compound, is called phenyl hydrazone. Look, the reactive site, the reaction will occur from this nitrogen because this nitrogen's electron lone pair is involved in resonance with the phenyl ring. So the, this lone pair is dispersed all over the phenyl ring. So this is not available for reaction. This phenyl, this nitrogen has, this nitrogen's lone pair is not localized anywhere into any different orbital. So this is undelocalized lone pair which is the, in the orbital of this nitrogen itself. So this is the basic site, not this. So the reaction will occur from this nitrogen as we have shown here. This nitrogen does not go for reaction. So this is called phenylhydrazine. Now the product will be called as phenylhydrazone. Fine. Similarly, if I may wrap this off,